Take a look at this chart. It's the S&P 500 on Wednesday, March 18th, when the index plunged more than 7%, triggering something called a circuit breaker. You can see it right here. At 12.56 p.m., trading was halted for a full 15 minutes. It was the fourth circuit breaker in less than two weeks. As markets went haywire on fears that the coronavirus would cause a global economic meltdown, circuit breakers halted trading on March 9th, 12th, and 16th as well. Circuit breakers were created to mitigate crashes, but some traders say they're ineffective, and in fact, they may serve to make a bad day even worse. We'll explain, but first, here's how they work. Circuit breakers were created in the aftermath of a 1987 stock market crash known as Black Monday. On October 19, 1987, we had a big crash where the Dow Jones fell approximately 25% during the day. And it was a mess. The printers were jamming in the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. They couldn't print the order tickets fast enough. Nobody really knew what their position was. They realized the market could not handle the volume. The purpose of circuit breakers was so markets could handle the increase in trading that happened during sudden major downswings. A circuit breaker is a stop in trading. The idea behind a circuit breaker is that something's gone wrong, so you need time to assess the problem and think about the impact. When the S&P 500 drops 7% from the previous close, a message goes out announcing the trading halt. At this moment, all the exchanges will stop accepting new orders. Under current rules, there are three levels of circuit breakers. They're triggered if the S&P drops 7%, 13%, and 20% in a single session. Before last week, the lowest circuit breaker, which was then at 10%, had only been tripped once. The level two and level three circuit breakers have never been triggered. On October 27, 1997, the Asian financial crisis hit the United States. The Hong Kong market had crashed the night before and the route hit New York. So that was the only time the old 10% market-wide circuit breaker was triggered. On May 6, 2010, the flash crash happened. This was a very strange event where the Dow Jones Industrial Average fell nearly a thousand points, uh, around 9.2% at the time, and then bounced back just as quickly for reasons that are still a matter of debate. In response, the SEC changed the percentage move required for a circuit breaker to trigger from 10% to 7%. The SEC also switched the index that would determine the circuit breaker. Up until that point, it had been the Dow Jones Industrial Average, not the S&P 500. But some traders questioned the value of halting the stock market, even during a crash. Proponents of circuit breakers say they do what they're meant to do. They give people a chance to breathe and pause and think about what's happening in the market so that they can come back in and maybe buy something instead of sell it. Critics of circuit breakers say that sometimes they actually exacerbate volatility and make sell-offs worse. The reason for that is because you could have investors who see that we're getting close to circuit breaker levels and they sell immediately because they're worried about getting caught in the circuit breaker, not being able to exit their positions. Yeah, we are definitely in a situation that most of us have not seen before. And we don't know what's going to happen. Circuit breakers are a sign of extreme times. As long as the coronavirus continues to, frankly, kill people and cause a very sharp economic slowdown, I wouldn't be surprised if more circuit breakers happen in the future.